Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. These two 2022 born baby true red tails are the same age, but as you can see, obviously they're not the same size. Today I'm going to be comparing the growth rates and sizes of a number of different 2022 boas, both red tails and non red tails, including some dwarf boas. We'll get out the scale and I'll show you quite a few of these beautiful baby boas. There'll be lots of nice babies to look at, so be sure to stay tuned. So a number of people have been asking me questions about the size of their baby boas. Maybe they've received a baby boa and it's quite a bit smaller than they were expecting. So as I've talked about many times in the channel, one of the biggest misconceptions about boas is their size. These are not giant snakes. These are medium to large snakes. Okay. So maybe people were thinking they were going to get some kind of giant baby boa, four or five feet long, and their boa is really only about two feet long. So today I want to show you some of these boas, show you what a normal size is for 2022 babies. And these animals are all between about five and nine months of age. I'm going to show you they're not quite a year old. And right now I wanted to show you just to start off this video, a comparison of a baby Pacaba Peruvian boa with a baby Suriname boa. And both of these boas were born late last summer. In fact, this boa, this Peruvian was born the first week of September this Suriname the last week in August. So this Suriname is actually about a week older, but you can see visually that the Peruvian is quite a bit bigger. And the Peruvians are just bigger. You know, they're born bigger, they grow faster, they eat larger prey items. So even if you feed them the same feeding schedule, they're gonna grow faster. And I found that's always the case. Surinams, the first year, they don't really grow all that much. So sometimes someone might get a Suriname that's eight or nine months old and might think, oh, it's stunted or it's not very big. But no, that's normal for the Surinams. They just don't grow very much over the first year. In fact, if you try to get them to grow faster by feeding them more, what happens is you'll probably get, end up with them regurgitating. And you know, regurgitation is really a nightmare for the true red tail owner. So you don't wanna overfeed them to try to get them to grow a little faster. You just have to be patient. Uh, with the growth rate of these boas. So with that in mind, I'm going to get out my scale. We're going to weigh a bunch of boas. I'll show you a bunch more and we'll see what the comparative sizes are. So this is my setup that I'm going to be using to weigh the boas. I got this little scale here and no, I don't deal drugs in my spare time. This is just a kitchen scale that I have weighs in grams and ounces. And then I'm going to use this little weigh boat. Uh, actually, it's not a weigh boat. What it is, is a drawer organizer that I use to make uh, snake hiding places, and I'm gonna use it as a weigh boat for today. It'll go on here, I'm gonna zero it out, put the snake in, we'll get the weight. We'll start off with this Peruvian, and first I wanna say that this is the absolute largest that I've had a boa that's a yearling, or you know, not quite a yearling. These Peruvians are just huge. They're bigger than any other boas I've had. Even when they're born, they're about as wide around as my thumb. So very large boa. I'd say close to two feet at birth. Right now I'd say probably about two and a half feet. Uh, it's always hard to tell exactly the length of a boa because they don't really cooperate. So I'm not gonna force them to try to sit still to measure them, but you can just see in the camera how big this boa is. So now I'm gonna put her on the scale here and hopefully she'll sit still for a sec. Maybe this weigh boat wasn't the best idea. Okay, so she is 199 grams. Okay, so not quite 200 grams. This nine, uh, what is she, what? Uh, born in September, so right now she's about five months old or so. Beautiful Pacalpa Peru Peruvian boa, 199 grams at about five months old. Next, we have the Suriname that's about the same age. And I had quite a few Suriname litters last year. I still have babies from each litter. And they're all about the same size. I did have one litter that the female was kind of a dwarfish. You know, the, she's about five feet long, even though she's like eight years old. So I didn't pick from that litter because those guys are a little bit smaller. But this is a typical Suriname. This guy is now about uh, six months old or so. We'll get a weight on him. Okay, he is 113 grams. So he's a little bit more than half the weight of the Peruvian, but quite a bit more slender. I'd say maybe he's around two feet. Again, hard to measure, but uh, quite a bit smaller than the uh, Peruvian, but this is normal. And this guy I expect will probably 
not put on that much growth for his first year, year and a half. And then once the Surinams reach about a year and a half to two or so, they start to grow a little bit faster. Whereas I found with the Peruvians, they just grow continuously. And I have some Peruvians now that are um, about two and a half years old, and they're about five feet long, versus my Surinams of the same age are maybe three, three and a half feet. Uh, in fact, I've been doing videos of that same cohort of animals that I've been following you know, from baby through their first few years, and I'm gonna do another update video uh, uh, in the future, but you can see a lot of these size comparison videos of the different ages of red tails. If you're interested, I'll put a link to one of them right here. Another pair of 2022 babies to compare. We have another true red tail. This is a Venezuelan red tail, and then a not true red tail, but a beautiful ball regardless. This is a Coops Pastel Colombian, similar to what many pet stores are calling red tail boas or Colombian red tails. And I'm not gonna rehash the whole, is this a red tail argument uh, at this point. But anyway, looking at these two boas, I would say that this Venezuelan is about the same size as the Suriname, maybe about 110 grams. This Colombian boa is quite a bit bigger than the uh, Suriname and the Venezuelan, although not nearly as big as the Peruvian. I would say maybe, I don't know, 130, I'm guessing. And you can see uh, this animal is also a little bit girthier, although still not nearly as uh, big around as that Peruvian. And I found that the Colombian boa imperator tend to grow quite a bit faster than the uh, true red tails. And that goes for the morphs as well. The, the bow and parator morphs also grow quite a bit faster. So let's get a weight first. We'll weigh my Venezuelan and hopefully I can uh, manage holding them both while weighing. Okay, the Venezuelan is actually about the same. He's about 107 grams. The weight is fluctuating a little bit here. About 100 and a little over 100, 100 and between 100 to 107 right now with the scales registering 102. So we'll just say he's about the same size as the Suriname, which I expect. And now let's just uh, zero this out here. Now for the Colombian Boa Imperator. This guy is 100 and he won't sit still. He's about 150 grams. Okay, so midway between the Suriname and the Peruvian in terms of size. But you know what I found with these Colombian Boa Imperators, they grow a lot faster than the true red tails. These guys put on quite a bit of mass or length rather for their first few years. Whereas the Suriname and most of the true red tails, they're just kind of slow for the first year, year and a half, two years or so. Uh, what you should be concerned about is not the exact growth rate of your boa, but just slow, steady growth. Most boas, if fed properly and cared for well, they're going to put on anywhere from about 6 inches to about 18 inches of growth a year. So if your boa is not putting on at least that much, you should be concerned. And you know, if you're really power feeding it to get it to grow more than you know, a foot, foot and a half a year, that's probably not good for the boa's long-term health. But you don't need to be obsessed about the size of their boas. You know, some people, you know, the, the size of their snake is really their number one worry that they have in life. So we've seen some true red tails, but I wanted to include some dwarf bows as well. So I have a crawl key and a tarhumara. This guy's being a little bit uh, edgy, so I'm kind of holding him at a distance. But uh, these guys uh, are born, they were born last summer in July, so they're about uh, nine months or so. and. First impression is they're really not that much smaller, if at all, than some of the true red tails. About the same size, about two feet or so. These guys are a little bit older, a few months older, uh, but in general, it's not surprising that these guys are about the same size, because as I mentioned, the true red tails generally will grow pretty slow over their first couple years. So first let's grab this dice Tarhumara, put her on the scale. Okay, so she comes in at 91 grams so our smallest boa so far but you know not that much smaller than the true red tails but you know a little bit but this female will probably get to about maybe four feet or so but it's going to take her probably about four years from now to get to that size just a great dwarf boa i just love the colors of these uh just an amazing 
type of bow to have in your collection. Now for the crawl key right here. And this one is a little bit more squeezy, but she's on the scale now and she weighs in at exactly 100 grams. Okay, so the dwarf boas, both about 100 grams at around nine months of age. One more type of boa to include for today's video, and this guy isn't quite a dwarf, but I would classify this as a semi-dwarf boa. This is a longicata or long tail boa. And I had a nice litter of these guys last year over the summer. Still have quite a few, so this is kind of a shameless plug. If you're looking for a longicata, you can check out my Flickr page for lots of beauties, including this one. This guy almost looks uh, anorithristic. And you know, the, the parents of this litter were sold to me as hat for anery. When the babies were born, there were no obvious anneries that jumped out. So I thought, well, I don't think any of them are anery. But some of them, as they're aging, are looking a little bit more anorithristic. It's kind of hard to tell with these longicata since they're pretty, you know, monotone, black and white anyway. So they have a little bit of yellow, a little bit of red. But overall, they definitely have an anorithristic look. But, you know, the true anneries are, on top of that, even more black and white. And, you know, the best examples look like you're looking at a black and white photograph. It's got, like, no color saturation at all. So this guy, we'll just see how he grows. Uh, if no one claims him. He'll be staying here for a while. And maybe he'll become more annery looking. But these Longicata, I would say, they're about... Uh, same size as the Suriname, I'd say maybe 110 grams. Bigger than the dwarfs, but uh, obviously quite a bit smaller than the Peruvian red tail. And we'll put him on the scale. Oh, this is a surprise. He comes in at a mere 71 grams. So this is actually the smallest boa so far, as far as the weight. I mean, he's clearly longer than the dwarf boas, the Kralki and the Tarhimara. I think he's just a lot more slender, you know, and I've noticed that my adult uh, Longicata are quite slender, probably the most slender boa that I have other than my um, my Pearl Island boas, which are really slender. But this just shows you how much more slender he is, even though he's longer or, you know, definitely as long as those two, the two dwarf boas we looked at, he's quite a bit uh, less massive. And actually, I'm just going to weigh him again, just make sure that wasn't an erroneous weighing. No, same, 71 grams. So there you go, Longicata. They're the uh, least massive, or the, they weigh the least of any of the 22 boas, baby boas that I have, certainly at least in this comparison. And I just wanted to end this by just, you know, reiterating, you don't need to be obsessed with the size of your boa. Um, don't worry if someone's boa is bigger than yours at the same age or, you know, they're telling you you're not feeding it enough or you're feeding it too much or whatever. Only you know what's right for your boa. So watch all of the videos. I've done lots of videos on feeding. Lots of other people have commented on this subject. But you don't need to be obsessed with it and you don't need to worry about what all these people on social media are telling you. You just want your boa to grow slowly but steadily. You know, feed enough, but don't feed too much, okay? You don't want to power feed, but you don't want to starve your boa either. It just all boils down to common sense. You want a boa that's still growing slowly but steadily and has a nice muscular appearance without being skinny and without being round. Anyway, hope this was helpful. Hope your boas are growing well. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Be sure to check out some of the available boas on my Flickr page. The link is below the description. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.